Hi, welcome to Tessera's Nerf Room. Rev triggers are overrated. Who needs rev triggers when you can have automated springers, dude? So this is the N-Strike Stampede, a blaster that came out a very, very long time ago. I believe this blaster is 14 years old now. That's insanity to me. And it is seriously one of the coolest blasters that Nerf has ever made. And I've been wanting to get one of these for so long that I can't possibly begin to get into it. I believe the Vulcan came before this, though it might have come after. Correct me in the comments, but I'm going to assume that it came before this blaster. And if that's the case, then I assume that this blaster was essentially trying to take the concept of the Vulcan and make it into a much more streamlined and easy to use blaster. Since the Vulcan is kind of really, really big and it uses the those obnoxious chains which get lost all the time. This takes external box magazines and has the proportions of a rather generic fully automatic primary, except for the fact that this blaster still is huge. This blaster is so big. Like if I bring the rapid strike over here for comparison, yeah, it absolutely dwarfs the Rapid Strike in size. The Rapid Strike, while being pretty similar front to back, it is just so much more massive top to bottom, and it's a lot wider than the Rapid Strike too. The Rapid Strike literally is shrunken down in every single proportion than the Stampede. I can't get over how large this blaster is, but let's start with the design. To go over the design, first I'm going to bring up the design without the shield, and then I'll show you the blaster with the shield on. This is a super cool looking blaster. Look at how good this thing looks from both sides, because yes, believe it or not, back in the end strike days, here's a little history lesson for you. Back in the end strike days, Hasbro actually cared about their blasters, and they'd managed to write the Nerf logo on both sides, but they didn't just do that, no. They actually wrote Stampede ECS on both sides as well. But if you thought that's where the painting on both sides ends, that's that we're just the very beginning, because get a load of this, look. End strike. it's got the instructions for how to use the blaster, it has the little safety thing right here that brings up the selector switch, all that is painted on the other side, and that's not even getting into the details that have been painted on both sides. This is painted, these are painted, this is painted, this back here is painted, these little silver things, they're all painted, and they're painted well on both sides. If you can't even tell that they're painted, they look like different pieces of plastic. It's almost like Hezro actually gave a crap about what the left side of the blaster looked like! But this design looks so good, and I think this is one of the best looking end strike yellow blasters. I don't want to paint this. If I do end up modding this, and I absolutely am going to in the future, because this thing is so cool, I can't not mod it. This is a color scheme that I'm probably going to leave exactly the way it is. It looks like the blaster a crash test dummy would hold. It is such a good looking design and there's so much going on here and all of it just blends together perfectly. It is just an awesome looking blaster and I think that every little detail on this shell does each other justice to make one of the best looking blasters imaginable. Let's talk about the ergonomics. This blaster has a main grip, a stock, and a foregrip built in and it also includes a foregrip that sticks out like this but I don't have it right now but it is basically just a normal foregrip with a bipod sticking out of it. I assume it's comfortable because looking at it it looks nice but I'm not going to judge the foregrip. The main grip is the original end strike style like you would see on a retaliator and holding this grip on a primary feels so right. It just, ah, oh, it feels like it's meant to be. It's so good. The finger troils that are built into the end strike grip absolutely do this blaster justice. The near flawless design of this grip, it's just so good. The stock is wonderful. It is the perfect length. And there's only one real complaint with it, which is how wide it is. But it makes sense because there's 6D batteries in here. Yeah, if you guys didn't know, this blaster is heavy. It is made out of stuff. And I cannot stress that enough. This is made out of stuff. 14 years later, 
and it only really creaks if you try to get it to creak, and even then, it doesn't creak that much. It is made solid. It's just, oh, it's so good. As for the foregrip, eh, it kind of falls apart, because there's three tactical rails, and two of the tack rails are on the sides where it jams the tips of your fingers, so unless you want to awkwardly wrap your fingers around the tops of the tack rails, yeah, it's not the best thing in the world. I would just recommend, like, doing something like this where you get this little thing right here, it's something along those lines and put it there. That's a whole lot better. And in fact, that might actually be a way that I want to use this in the future. Cause that is, that is really good. I, I haven't actually tried that until just now. That's really good. And now for the reason that a lot of you guys probably remember this blaster, the, f the freaking shield. Look at how big this shield is. This is the largest nerf shield that has ever been created, hands down. And it is specifically designed to fit perfectly around the shell of this blaster to where the actual shape of the shield contours to fit specific details on the blaster shell and the sides right here barely and perfectly touch against the sides of the blaster. It is how it's meant to be and it is really, really good. At the same time though, the shield doesn't take away from the, uh, the design of the blaster and it just makes it look like a freaking tank or something you would see like on a stationary turret and there's this big window right here that I don't think darts can fit through though I haven't actually tried that no they can't fit through it darts literally cannot get to you through the shield unless somehow someone manages to shoot through this yeah, that's not gonna happen. You're safe behind this shield. And this was the first blaster to include the 18 round magazine. You put that in and it's how it's meant to be. And can you believe that? Look at this. There's a thing behind the magwell, but it is specifically designed to be able to fit it. And you know what that means? <laughs> it's how it's meant to be. Look at that. It's beautiful. If you were to paint this in end strike colors, like the end strike yellow, or just like the, the dark gray or like the silverish, like, oh man, yeah. Beautiful, perfect. So how does this blaster work? Well, it is a magazine fed AEG. So you put your magazine in, you have a selector switch only on the left hand side that can indicate whether the blaster is turned on or off. Once you turn the blaster on, there's no rev trigger or anything else you have to push. You just pull down the trigger and it will start shooting automatically. And this blaster, similarly to the Rapid Strike, has a smart sensor inside of it, so if you just tap the trigger a little bit, it will always advance exactly one shot before shutting the motors down. Is it dying? No, it's just fine. But yeah, that is a pretty interesting feature, and similarly to other blasters, if you open the access door, it says no and immediately kills itself. But one thing that I find very interesting about this blaster is the access door itself. You see how it's not very big on this side? It's very big on the other side. So only from the left hand side, you have a ton of access into the breach. Way more access than most access doors nowadays. Gosh, I'm just realizing how nice it is to have a big access door to where you don't have to like squeeze your fingers to try and get a jam out. Gosh, this blaster is so much better than most modern stuff in the blaster is so good. It is one of the nicest, smoothest, crispiest, butteriest magwells I've ever seen in my entire life. It is so nicely refined and so, ah, oh, it's so good. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, well, when the mag release jams every now and then, it sucks. The mag release, I'm going to bring this down to old age, but the mag release is a little bit smushy. You pull it back and the mag comes out and it is ambidextrous, which is pretty good. As for the main trigger, well, it's, it's just a smushy trigger. There's not much to say about it, though it gets the job done. You hold the trigger down and the blaster shoots. And because it's not like a, not a actual Springer trigger where you're pulling it to release a catch, you're just using it to press down a switch, the trigger not being the best isn't the worst thing in the world. I hope you like tactical rails. You know how when the modulus came out and having five tactical rails, a barrel and a stock was a big deal? Yeah, this blaster doesn't have a barrel or a stock, but it does have one, two, three, four, five, six rails. This has the most rails out of any blaster I think has ever existed. I actually don't think there is a nerf blaster that's been released that has more rails than six, or even any other blasters that have six rails. From everything I've ever seen, this blaster is the only one to have more than five rails. That is freaking awesome. 
First deploying, tactical swag. Tactical, 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 tactical. Yeah! Now deploying, tactical darts. Tactical, 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 come on. There we go. Alrighty, I... You can't see past it. Okay, the tactical swag will have to wait. So the performance is bad, like actually really bad. Even for end strike standards, this thing is shooting so it is almost unusable because of how bad the performance is. The darts did not make it from the left side of the room to the right side of the room 99% of the time. A couple darts here and there actually managed to hit the target and got stuck in it, but like all of the other ones, through both of the firing procedures, I shot almost 40 darts and four of them got stuck to the target. All the rest of them are all over the floor because of how bad this blaster is actually performing, to the point where a deploy can outperform it. But you really don't get this because you want to use it in its stock form, like in an actual Nerf War. You buy this blaster for one of two reasons. One, because you want to modify it to shoot short darts and shoot really fast and really aggressively. Or two, because the function of the way this blaster works and the fact that it is so loud and it kicks against you and it is just such a pleasant experience is so cool that you can't pass it up. And legitimately, both of those reasons are why I bought this blaster. I don't care about this blaster performing badly because it is so fun to use. It is such a joyous, pleasant experience to use this blaster no matter what you're doing with it. Even though the blaster is really, really back heavy, when you actually hold it, like this, the weight isn't that bad. It actually feels like a rapid strike. It doesn't feel bad at all, and is very easy to get used to. The blaster form, the function, the usability, the, the clacking that this thing makes, like it slams with every shot. It is so fun. I can't begin, I can't end. I love this blaster so much. And I definitely think that if you are just looking for a super ridiculously fun blaster to play with that you don't have to really like worry about performing because it, it doesn't perform at all, this is one of the best ones I've seen. The End Strike Stampede is absolutely amazing, and if you can find one for a good deal, I highly recommend checking it out. Not to mention, it is just so nostalgic. It looks so good. I This design is just... Oh, it's beautiful. Thanks for watching. Bye.